Now that I have a framework of what I know mapped out, I'm going to identify what I want to know. To do this most accurately, I need additional data from my DNA test called segment data. The segment data is where I can see exactly which chromosomes receive the same genetic signature among my matches. Unfortunately, some testing companies don't export segment data from their main views. The segment view is grayed out if that feature is unavailable for your testing company. So here on my ancestry list, the segment view icon is grayed out. I need to download my raw results and process them through GEDmatch to get segment data out from an ancestry test. That doesn't mean I can't interpret ancestry data. It just means I'm going to be skipping a step and that could make my interpretation a little less precise. If I switch to my 23andMe kit, you'll see that I was able to import segment data and I have it here in the segment view. I see 23 numbered sections representing my 23 chromosomes from 1 to 22 and then X. The sections get shorter as I scroll down, as you can see along the right-hand side. This represents the length of that chromosome. The wide bars are long chromosomes. The shorter widths are shorter chromosomes. When I click a section to open it, for example 21, I see circles inside boxes. The boxes are sections on my chromosome I share with the individual kits, represented by the circles within the box. The boxes flow downward as the percentage of exact match data decreases. This shows how my DNA has been remixed over generations back in time. The larger the box, the greater the match, which means the closer in time we share an ancestor because it hasn't been divided again and again over time. So a big box on a short chromosome is a good strategic place for me to start analyzing my segment matches. I have a higher percentage of inheritance here, so it's like taking care of the easy answers on a, on a test first. When I color-coded related kits in the last step, they carried forward into this segment view, and now I can start working with known relationships to see where exactly we share genetic inheritance and who else got the same genetic data. If I apply a filter to one degree of separation from Victoria W., I'll see only the kits related to both of us, and I can paint these related matches to assign them to a branch of my tree. Then I can remove the filter and see those matches in context. For example, here on chromosome 1, I see matches from my mom's side and also my dad's side, and some I still don't know. One thing I'd like to point out is that I inherited half my DNA from my mom and half my DNA from my dad. Separating what genetic information came from my dad and what came from my mom is called phasing. The testing companies can't just separate those out for me. It's actually a bit complicated. So RootsFinder segment view isn't phased. You may want to check out our video on phasing to learn more about this. Because the segment view isn't phased, at any given point on my DNA, I could have relatives from both sides of my family showing up as circles inside the boxes. That's why I see both blue and yellow circles inside these segments here on my chromosome 1, mixed in with these unknowns. This portion of my chromosome got half its data from my mom and half from my dad. I see that I have relatives from each side, and there are some I'm not sure about yet. So now I'm ready to identify what I want to know and start working on some of these unknowns. I'm going to do this using a method called triangulation. Check out the next video to see how to use triangulation.